Hey, Chris with RC Worst here, and today we're gonna to be doing a splice inside of a sewer basin or sump um, or septic tank, regardless. We're gonna be showing you guys how to use an electrical resin to create an impermeable splice. Um, so this, this particular uh, type of splice is intended for situations where maybe you've got a float inside of a tank or um, something where you don't have access to a splice box or somewhere where you constantly are having the, the splices corrode out or something along those lines. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So we'll talk about first what we're using for the splice. Uh, we've got a scotch cast uh, encapsulating and insulating resin that we use and it's basically a two-part resin that we're going to use inside of a PVC vial and then we're going to create that splice. And I'll walk you through all the steps to properly do that installation. So just again, a little background on why we perform this type of splice in the situations where um, the splice box is maybe getting full of water or you've got to put a splice in where you don't have a splice box and you don't have the capability of pulling new wire, like in the instance that you've got UF direct berry cable, uh, it's not real conducive to re-dig a trench and all that, but you've got to have a splice that's watertight. And we found that this method uh, works very well. It, the, the splice is almost impenetrable, and you'll see why. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got our uh, Scotchcast electrical insulating resin, and this is actually available in two sizes. We've got an A and a B, the B being the larger size, and it's roughly twice the size of the A. And then we have our vials, which these we make in-house. This is a three-quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC with a specialty plug that we put in the bottom of those. Uh, and the way that we actually make our connections is we just use some of these Panduit joints that we've got here. Uh, those are available in multiple sizes just because in some cases you may be splicing a motor in which case you would use this larger vial or uh, you may be splicing a float switch like we're going to be doing today so you would use the appropriate size panduit joints we've also got a crimping tool and we've got uh, some wire strippers here and then for safety of course um, specific to this resin it's a very uh, toxic resin so you want to be very careful with it so we've got some gloves and we've got some safety glasses um, and then we've got just a little bit of electrical tape and in case we make a mess some paper towels okay so now that we've got the equipment figured out I just want to remind everybody that this method is most commonly applied to repairs as opposed to new installations. And that's just because uh, there may be some legality if it's a job that's being permitted or something along those lines. So if you're doing this type of method on a new installation, make sure that you check with your installer um, to make sure that they're going to approve that. So without getting into the, the details surrounding the legality of this, um, we'll jump right into getting to performing the splice. All right, so here we are in our uh, simulation of a uh, float switch that's needing to be replaced uh, inside of a sewer basin. What we're going to do is take the old float switch out, put a new float switch in, and then show you how to perform that wire splice. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just take our knife and uncoil this wire here so we've got something to work with. You may have come across something like this in the field at some point, or maybe you have done something like this at some point. Um, and all this is, is electrical tape inside, or on the outside, and then uh, wire nuts on the inside. And this is a, a bad way of doing things, but this happens all the time, and it's very unfortunate. But the reality is, is electrical tape will not keep the water out very well or for very long. Um, so what we're going to do, take these wire nuts off, get those out of the way, throw those away, get rid of them. And then we've got, now we've got our UF cable here. We'll just tuck that out of the way for a second. And then we've got the float cable. So since since we're just simulating, we're going to go ahead and just leave the float where it is and we'll show you how to perform this splice with our now new float, we're going to call it. Um, so the first thing that you want to do with these resin splices, and I'll kind of show you, is you've got to determine how much of the cable jacket to use. So we're going to be using the small three-quarter inch vial. Um, and the idea here is when you insert 
the cable with the splice um, or with the joints, the wire joints on the end, that your resin is going to cover the jacket because inside of these cables you've got either stringy material or you've got like a fibrous material that wicks water very well so the water is able to travel through the cable into the switch and cause the switch to go bad uh, and that's a lot of the time the reason that the switch does go bad so the idea we want the uh, jacket to be relatively uh, buried or buried relatively deep into this leaving just enough room for our joints at the bottom so the idea is, is as much jacket as you can get so what we'll have to do is get our wires ready and it's the same story with the UF direct berry um, I you could potentially use this on like THN THHN cable or or pump cable but you always want to make sure that whatever the native jacket is of the cable whether it's THHN and it's just single strand and it's, it's just got its native jacket or you've got a cable like this, you want to make sure you encapsulate whatever that native ca cable's insulation is for the best protection of that splice. Um, so we'll get to work preparing these. Uh, we'll use our wire strippers and, our, uh, and we'll cut this to length just so that we, we know exactly where we're going with it. Um, so with that tube, we probably want to be about there. So we'll cut these off and start working on those real quick here. Okay, we've got those ends. And actually, I forgot to mention this, but what you want to do is have one about a half an inch longer than the other one. So we'll actually trim this one back and we'll restrip it. And I'll explain why in just a second. Okay, so now if we insert this all the way to the bottom, we've got a large portion of it. The jacket is gonna be encapsulated in that resin. So now before we put the uh, joints on and crimp those down, We'll get our UF cable ready for the same situation. So using our guide, and I nicked a little bit of this wire, so I'm actually going to cut it back a little farther. So we want to probably be, oh, somewhere around here. So we'll cut this back, and then we're going to just strip this back. And I don't have to take this back very far, so I'm kind of just trying to be careful. So that popped off. I kind of just scored it, and then I was able to just pop that off. And since we're doing just a float, we don't need the ground. Just trim that back, get it out of the way. Okay, so now again, we'll take and cut one of them about a half inch shorter than the other one, and then strip them back. Okay, so now those are just about even, so I would say that's pretty good. And uh, we'll go ahead and put on our Panduit connectors. So again, just these little guys and our crimping tool. and we'll take and start making our connections. So you wanna shove that in there all the way, and ideally you wanna see it through the other side just to know it's got a great connection. And then put your crimping tool on there and batten down the hatches. Give it a good squeeze. You wanna make sure it's firmly on there, so give it a tug. Make sure that it's not gonna come off on you, of course. But all you electricians out there don't need to be told that, I'm sure. Go ahead and crimp it. I can see it showing through the end here, so I know it's all the way in. So there we go, that's the end product there. And now if it hasn't become apparent yet, the reason that we offset those 
is because the opening in the vial is barely large enough to accept them both side by side. So by staggering them a little bit, we buy ourselves a little bit of room because as we insert this with the resin in it, we wanna make sure that uh, we're not scraping the walls on the way down, kind of creating an air pocket. Um, we wanna try to insert it through down the middle of the tube. So this kind of helps with by creating a little extra space. All right, so here's the insulating resin we're gonna use. It's the A size. Um, and so we'll just show you kind of what that's all about before we get our safety gear on. So it's just a real basic two-part resin. And uh, a person just mixes those together. And um, then we're ready to start our pouring process. But before I begin any of that, I'm gonna throw on some glasses and, go and uh, gloves. Okay, and obviously the reason that, that I throw the glasses and gloves on now, even, even before I've opened the package, is just because you know, you've always got the possibility for something to burst. You're putting this under pressure to relieve this seam. Um, so it's just a good idea to be cautious. And um, a lot of times you can just squeeze this until it pushes through. We'll see if that's actually gonna work. I think that if we roll it maybe. And there, there it pushed through. So I just, like a toothpaste tube or something, you roll it. And then you start working all that mixture from this bag into the other bag. Just kind of squeeze it all there. And then we'll work everything back to the other side. And then we'll just start kind of working it like this, back and forth, trying to really squeeze everything out that we can. And you want to make sure that this sets up really well and hard. So mixing it thoroughly is uh, recommended. Um, this stuff generally takes anywhere from two to eight hours to set up. So you're not really running a great risk of it drying out on you while you're right there kind of just mixing it up really well. And obviously the set time depends on the temperature and um, that's indicated on the package on the front. It tells you how long it's gonna take for it to set completely. So we're just gonna mix this for a few more seconds and then we'll get on to the next step. All right, so now we've got it all mixed up and now I'm just gonna work everything to the bottom and I'll just lay this on a flat surface and use my vial to kind of just push everything. So now I've pushed all of my material up to this side and I'll just fold it in half and then we'll cut the corner off of this and begin pouring. We've got the resin. We're probably gonna to wanna to fill this uh, to about just over half, about two thirds of the way up before we insert the splice in. because there's gonna be some displacement that happens as we put that in there. So we'll set our resin aside and you might be able to see it. We're about right here. Um, so now this part, we'll try to get in close. This part is a little tricky because what we wanna do is as we insert these and the top of this uh, joint starts to get submerged by the resin, we want to bob it up and down because what we're trying to do is get as much resin in here as we can because this resin it's so viscous that air bubbles aren't going to be able to escape so by bobbing that up and down right at the surface you're kind of forcing the resin in and at the same time you're getting the air air out so we'll do that a few times i don't know if we're going to be able to show that very well on camera uh, but hopefully i explained it fairly well and you want to try to insert it um, without scraping it along the side. So I'm doing the bobbing motion now, getting that first one filled. I'm lowering it, bobbing on the second one, getting that one filled up nicely. Um, so now they're both really saturated. And then I take and shove it all the way down. And so now it's seated all the way in there. And we've had a little bit of displacement, but there's still some room. So what we're gonna do is fill this extra space 
with some of that resin that we had left over. We'll just take it right up to the top. All right, so now we've got that full as full gets. So now you might be wondering, okay, so you said it takes uh, hours to set, or am I just gonna have to sit here and hold this for eight hours? No, so what we do is, uh, and the reason we've got this pipe here is you can tape it to your, uh, to your discharge pipe or your riser pipe here, um, or you can coil your wires back up and tape it over there. So we'll show you um, how we would tape it to the riser pipe really quickly and uh, then you'll be able to get an idea of kind of how that works. And obviously you don't want to tape it at the top because that would just be silly. You want to tape it at a level that probably at the level that the wires come into the tank would be a, a good idea but our float switch is in the way because this is just a miniaturized model so we'll just show you for the sake of showing you uh, it taped just above the float in this instance. And now once this is cured, there's no reason whatsoever to uh, necessarily take it off, um, but there, you can easily take it off of there if you need to, if you need to remove your floats or take the pump out or anything. It doesn't have to stay there once it's set, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So now that we've got our resin splice made, our float switch is going to be good, up and running. We're going to be happy. Um, the system's going to be working again. So now we just have to clean things up, coil our wires up, and make everything look nice. Okay, so now we've got our wires tied up, out of the way. Uh, got that mess cleaned up. We're going to leave this overnight. We're going to come back and check it in the morning. All right, so welcome back. It is uh, the next day, it's the morning. Um, and we take a, took a look at our splice here and this thing is solid. Um, it's well in there, well seated. And uh, the splice, I can tap on it a little bit, <clears throat> is like hard as a rock. So um, I would say that that was very successful. And I just kind of want to remind everybody that this is, a, the, the resin is available in two sizes, a B, and then the size that we used, an A. Uh, we had enough left over in the A packet to probably do another one of these, possibly enough to do one of the larger vials um, and a smaller vial. The B, again, that will do roughly um, four smaller vials or two to three larger vials, depending on, on how you pour those. Um, and also when it comes to the vials, we've got the one inch and the three quarter inch PVC. Uh, these ones, the three quarter inch, are intended to be used with a single float switch. You don't have a whole lot of room in there to do multiple connections. So these ones are more intended for individual situations, whereas this larger one, um, it's more intended to be used on larger wires, like a motor wire, and have a single connection, but we have in the past done like a, a motor wire and a float in the instance that you've got a single float running a pump or something along those lines, and you can, you can easily fit two of those splices in there. So that kind of sums up um, what all the different options are in terms of sizing and how you can kind of configure it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for more great content, and we'll see you next time.